blood all over the floor, blood on the walls, blood on the ceiling. Like, it was a bit of a mess. <laughs> another true crime case but today's case is actually a little bit different to the last one that i did today's true crime case is actually a solved one you'll all be happy to know everyone including myself was kind of a little bit i don't like the ending of unsolved true crime cases and um, it kind of stresses me out when i don't know like what happened at the end so today we're gonna go for a solved one so you'll be happy to know that we have an ending to this one but yeah today's case is about Catherine Knight um yeah Catherine lived in Aberdeen in New South Wales in Australia and just a little bit of backstory on her before we get started she did actually have kind of like a bit of a dysfunctional upbringing her parents didn't stay together her mother actually had quite a few affairs and it was known in the neighborhood that her mum was kind of sleeping with everyone her mother did have four children before she had Catherine. Catherine, i can never say this i don't know if it's Catherine or Catherine. Catherine knight we'll just call her kath for the sake of this so yeah before she had kath she actually ended up having four children before her i'm not too sure if Catherine was the last one but i'm guessing she was but anyway um in her kind of like later life she actually worked in a slaughterhouse um which you know is killing animals just in case you don't know what a slaughterhouse is but after that she ended up working in a boning room which is basically where you take off the skin of the animals and she also kind of took the bone marrow out and everything like that um not the most pleasant job for me personally but Apparently she was really good at her job. All her co-workers said that she was a pleasant person to start out with and um, Yeah, she was just really good at her job. So they had no problems with her in that regard. Catherine's first marriage was to a man named David Kellett. Now, this is We kind of start to see a trend of patterns in Catherine and her marriages. They never end very well she was a very aggressive person. I can't find my brush that I'm looking for anywhere. It stressed me out. So I'm going to find that first. There it is. We got it. But yeah. Um, she was a very aggressive person and she was kind of known for fighting. And she was just like a bit of one of them people that you meet. You're like, I don't want to get on the wrong side of you. No, thank you. And that was Catherine. So but also david was kind of that same person as well he was a raging alcoholic um he worked on railway well he used to work on railways and he actually watched his best friend um die on like a it's like a railway there's a word for it but i can't think what the word is it's like a little railway accident and his best friend actually passed away in front of him and then he also just in case that wasn't enough for the poor man he ended up watching a school bus get hit by a train. So as you can imagine, um, he wasn't very mentally stable after all that. And he was a raging alcoholic. Um, he did actually try to abuse Catherine a few times during the relationship. However, like I said, she was very aggressive and she did hold her ground a lot. Then if they ever went out and he got into a fight, she would also help. She would help him throw hands, as they say. So it was literally just a really toxic relationship. Um, yeah, wasn't the best for anyone involved because they were both very aggressive and angry people. They did end up actually getting married. However, on the wedding night, they obviously had sex, um, as most people do on the wedding night however david fell asleep straight after sex on that night um catherine didn't like this and it kind of like upset her and really wound her up so um 
you know, she decided to try and strangle him in his sleep, as you do. If, you know, someone falls asleep straight after sex, you just strangle them. But, however, he did actually wake up whilst she was trying to strangle him and she man he managed to fight her off so that he could, you know, break free and not die. They actually stayed together for 10 years after, you know, the marriage and the whole strangling situation and they ended up having a child together. However, after the child was born, this kind of sent Catherine a little bit... Um, more crazy than she was and she ended up getting postnatal depression which is literally quite normal in pregnancies quite a few women get postnatal depression but this kind of led her to do some extreme things especially with the behaviors that she was portraying before she had the baby this could this only increased these behaviors more so she did end up taking her child um when she was literally a baby and they were walking down the street and she just kind of like pushed the pram just down the street and just like let it drive off down the street. She then was admitted to a uh, psychiatric hospital and she stayed there for a few weeks. After she got released, um, she did end up then taking her two month old baby to a railway track and just leaving the baby on the tracks, which isn't ideal at all. And then she just left the baby and just walked off. The baby was on the railway tracks and a man who was walking by um, managed to save her literally within seconds of the train driving past because Catherine had planned out when the train was coming so that she could leave her at a perfect time so that she would get hit, which is a bit strange. But yeah, that wasn't good. But the baby did get saved and she did end up again in psychiatric hospital. She did end up in and out quite a few times and she got arrested for that as well, I think. Um, again, she was in and out for various reasons. I'm not gonna get into all the reasons because there's quite a few, but her and David obviously didn't quite make it through the relationship past that, and they ended up splitting up. Catherine then got into a second relationship with a man called David Saunders. Um, this one was kind of a little bit less aggressive than the first one but still as you're gonna find out ridiculous um they didn't actually move in together they lived in separate houses and Catherine was not impressed in the slightest by this she wanted him to move in with her she wanted commitment by all senses of the word she wanted him to obviously come and move in but he was not having it he didn't want to move in with her um and at this point she was like oh hell no i want this man to myself so she ended it up taking the two month old puppy that they had and she slit its throat in front of david just to kind of um no reason at all literally no reason for this behavior but she just wanted to show david like what she was capable of and what would happen if he didn't listen to her after he had she had then slit the puppy's throat um, she then hit, his, hit him over the head with a frying pan, knocking him unconscious. Um, however, after all of this, they did end up actually staying together. They didn't actually separate, which is a little bit strange to me. And they ended up having a daughter. After the daughter was born, they ended up kind of like arguing and falling out, which is also a pattern that we're seeing here. This did happen after the last child was born. Um, but she ended up actually stabbing David in um, the chest with a pair of scissors, as you do. And I think she also hit him over the head again after that. After David was on his way home, she then, um, he then, David ended up going to the police. After all of that happened, David ended up going to work the next morning, I think it was. And on the way home, he actually stopped off at the police station to explain to the police what had happened. And he took out a restraining order against her so that she obviously couldn't stab him again. And he ended up going into hiding. Uh, Catherine did try and find him. She literally looked all over for him to try and get back to him. But she, she couldn't find him, obviously, because he had gone into hiding and no one was confirming his address with her so that relationship kind of ended there and she just kind of moved on after that after she realized that she's not going to find him she just kind of went about her life she ended up then finding another partner called john chillingworth 
they were together for three years which wasn't actually that long and apparently according to like everyone who knew them both it was a very kind of normal relationship unlike the last two they argued but it wasn't anything different to kind of like normal relationship arguments there was no stabbing involved or children left on railway tracks so as you can see for her she was actually doing quite well however she did end up cheating on him multiple times but she ended up cheating on him mainly with someone called john price this is the person that they, she then goes on to be with after her and john chillingworth actually finished seeing each other okay so john was 45 at the time and he also had two children from his previous relationship and um, they were a little bit older so they kind of like got on with Catherine. They really liked her actually. They said that she was really nice and easy to get on with and they had no problems with her. Um, there was one problem with John that kind of triggered Catherine a lot. He didn't want to marry her or anyone in that sense. He just didn't want to get married. So this kind of didn't sit well with her at all because as I said previously, she's kind of like got a thing for commitment and she really wants people to get married to the, to her to move in with her and all of this and he just wasn't up for it uh this did like ridiculously wind her up and she did not like the fact that he didn't want to get married to her so she ended up actually videotaping things that he had apparently stolen from work and sending it to his boss uh this obviously led to him getting fired he did have this job for like 17 years he loved his job I don't know what he did i can't remember and i'm not getting ridden down but he loved his job he was there for ages and she had literally just like got it taken away from him so he ended up then um asking her to move out so yeah he ended up kicking catherine out after he got home and he was fired from his job um but three months later they ended up back together and she was back living with him they had multiple arguments again about the fact that um, John didn't want to get married to her and this like led to quite extreme arguments and one day Catherine actually stabbed him in the chest. She then went to the police after this happened and said to them that she did it in self-defence and that he had been ab abusing her and all of this like literally made up some massive lie about John and the way that he was giving her all of this abuse and it was self-defense so she actually ended up taking a restraining order out against john which was a bit weird however she kept going against the restraining order um not listening to it they still saw each other it was literally the most pointless restraining order ever so they still lived with each other i'm sure or they like slept at each other's houses but it was reported that john was like really really scared of her as you would be this woman is a psychopath and he kind of had conversations with his co-workers saying that if anything happens to him or if he goes missing or doesn't come to work one day it is Catherine's fault she has killed him please call the police which at that point I would be completely and utterly the most concerned for a friend that I could be if one of my friends came to me and said uh, if I ever go missing oh yeah it's just um, it's just my partner's fault it's fine i would um take immediate action but no the co-workers kind of like listen to this but joey it just kind of like goes in one ear and goes out the other you just kind of listen to it but you're like oh he's not gonna go missing she's not gonna do anything to him how they were wrong it was reported that catherine actually kept a knife in her um bedside table and um i think the co-workers knew about this i think john knew about this and he told them as well just to kind of like say hey listen i'm not just saying that she's a psychopath she's got a knife in a bedside table and um we all know what she's capable of okay so i've just done the rest of my eyes off camera because i was getting a little bit stressed because it wasn't going right but anyway um eyes are done and moving on so yeah co-workers been told knife in the bedside table um so i don't know what it was that triggered it there was obviously something but oh, probably not with her actually there might not have been something that triggered it but anyway one day she took the knife out of the bedside table and proceeded to stab john 
37 times um all over like his front his back his neck his face literally everywhere he was stabbed 37 times in total and obviously when he didn't turn up for work this kind of like was a little bit suspicious to his co-workers because obviously he'd had this conversation with them saying like if i don't turn up for work if i go missing anything like that please call the police um so i read kind of like conflicting things at this point apparently one of the neighbors was a little bit concerned and rang work and was like his car's still on the drive has he come to work but apparently work went anyway someone checked and couldn't find anything so rang the police no one was answering the door also forgot to mention that after Catherine had stabbed john i'm literally not doing anything on the makeup here so i should probably get a little bit of a move on but yeah, we'll do that. Anyway, after Catherine had stabbed John 37 times, she, she then took a load of different tablets. Uh, I don't know if she was trying to kill herself or if she was just trying to kind of play up to the police or anything like that. Uh, but she took all these tablets and then just literally went and lied down in bed um, after, you know, everything had happened and she'd killed him and all of the rest of the stuff after she stabbed him happened which we'll get into in a minute but um yeah so his work colleagues called the police and the police showed up at the house they knocked on the door and obviously no one answered so they were like a little bit concerned at this point so they looked through the letterbox and couldn't see anything because there was a curtain blocking the way um so at this point they can't see anyone in the address no one's answering and a man who had previously claimed to his co-workers that he was feeling unsafe in his relationship has just like not turned up to work they decided to proceed into the property so they did open the door um i think that the door was unlocked if it wasn't they've opened the door um and obviously they've gone to move this curtain that was in the way out of the way so the police have walked in and moved it with his arm. So he looked down at his arm, um, as you do, and seen that his arm is now covered in blood. Um, so he's looked up at this curtain and it wasn't a curtain. It was skin hanging from like the ceiling down, covering the door, just human skin. And he looked down at the floor and there was blood absolutely everywhere. There was blood all over the floor blood on the walls blood on the ceiling like it was a bit of a mess so you know they decide to proceed into the rest of the house and in the living room there is just a torso on the floor no head no head just a torso on the floor obviously you know the skin that was hanging belongs to the torso on the floor so they're like oh well this isn't good at all so they carry on walking around and they walk into the kitchen and they find a head of the torso that didn't have the head they find this head in a pan cooking and they kind of find meats being prepared vegetables the table set um it's looking all nice and everything so after some further kind of like what's the word further further um what's the word they looked at the body a bit more further further something they looked at the body and they saw that um his back muscle i think it was had been taken off out which is um lovely so she'd taken his back muscle off and then cut it into five kind of steaks if you will uh and started preparing them in the oven and just cooked them uh she made she put four to the side after she'd cooked them just left them there to prepare with the veg and she'd also put one of the steaks out for the dog how nice keep the dog in on the meals so clearly this is looking a little bit dodgy for catherine so the police then go upstairs to, you know, arrest her for the murder that had just taken place in her house. And she obviously was unresponsive because she'd taken all these tablets. So the police were a little bit like, what the heck do we do here? So she ended up actually coming round and 
um, they took her in for questioning to be interviewed and everything. And at first she claims, she claimed that she had like no memory of anything that happened, which obviously we could see that coming from a mile. If anyone ever commits a crime and they want to get away with it, it's always, <laughs> I can't remember anything that happened that night, that day. Can't remember a thing. Was I there? No, don't know. You was. So obviously the police just didn't believe this. So she did get arrested. Um, but blood splatter analogy came back and it proved that he was, he actually did try to kind of fight Catherine off when she did stab him in bed. Um, he tried reaching for the light, they think. And um, obviously she managed to stab him to death before he could get away uh it was also proven with the blood splatter that she more than likely did the skinning in the living room as that is where most of the blood uh was in the house and then she would have decapitated him and took his head from the living room into the kitchen where she started to prep the meals um, this is because there was kind of like a trail of blood leading up to the living room from uh, leading up to the kitchen from the living room and then after a little bit more kind of investigation of the table and kind of like the placement of the food and things like that they found some name tags on the um, table because obviously she was prepping for a meal so she was going to invite some people round these name tags were actually the names of the children his actual children so she was going to invite the kids round to come and have tea and she was going to feed them their own dad like okay after a while of kind of denying everything that had happened Catherine then kind of like admits to killing him. I think she kind of realises that um, there's no way that she can get away with that. Like she was the only person in the house and the house was an absolute state and it was also filled with literal mountains of forensic evidence. So she wasn't getting away with this crime no matter what she said. So she just gave in and she said, yeah, I did kill him, but it wasn't like kind of my fault it was just the years of abuse that i've received off him um i just i just couldn't cope anymore i've snapped um i'm i'm mentally ill because of all this abuse which i couldn't find anywhere on any of the websites videos documentaries anything that i watched i couldn't find if um he actually was abusive to her uh, she clearly was very abusive to every partner she was with so that's a heck of a bold statement for the woman to be making if he did abuse her um but yeah she claimed to be mentally unstable and kind of you know um it's not my fault there was kind of like a mental examination that happened to check if she was in the right mind at the time when the murder took place and it actually came back that she was completely in the right state of mind i wouldn't quite say sane because anyone who can you know do something like that clearly isn't um the most sane person but it did say come back that she was in the right state of mind and she wasn't kind of like eh, in like a mental daze uh, she had no blackouts anything like that so she did actually obviously go on trial and everything and and um she did end up getting life in prison with no possibility of parole and she actually is the first ever woman in australia to get a life sentence with no possibility of parole so that's an interesting little fact for me there uh, she did that was in 2000 by the way she got charged in 2000 for his murder 
and she did actually try and appeal her sentence in 2006 on the basis that apparently she said um, that the charge that she got was too severe for the uh, crime that she committed. So, I mean, take that how you want, but I don't think that that is correct. I think that the sentence that she got was perfect for the crime she committed. She said that the murder wasn't serious enough for that kind of sentence, which only she would say. So that actually concludes today's case. I hope that you all enjoyed watching this one. I really enjoyed making it. Um, yeah, if you want to do any more reading on this one, there is a lot of stuff that I didn't include online. It would have just literally, this video would have been ridiculously long if I would have tried to include everything but yeah it's all online if you want to read up about it if you have any questions or anything like that or you have any case requests things you want to talk me to talk about next time just leave them in the comments or you can message me on my instagram which is linked in the description down below yeah I'm out of breath now from talking about all of that asthma check but yeah um I hope to see you all in the next one please subscribe also if you knew just jumped on you with that one but yeah subscribe if you're new like the video comment everything but yeah i'm gonna go now so i hope you all enjoyed this video Bye. -bye.